Hi, this is Philip Pador, founder of NCLEX RN 45 Day Challenge. In this video, I'm going to be talking about prostate cancer. Prostate cancer usually refers to the prostate adenocarcinoma, where adeno means glands, carcinoma refers to the uncontrolled growth of cells. So prostate cancer is a tumor or, ver or a growth that originates in the prostate gland. Only males are born with the prostate. So, this condition only affects male and not females. Typically, when there's a prostate cancer, it's considered malignant, meaning the tumor cells can metastasize or invade and destroy surrounding tissues as well as the tissues throughout the body. The prostate is a small gland about the size and shape of a walnut that sits under the bladder and in front of the rectum. The urethra, which is the tube through which urine leaves the bladder, goes to the prostate before reaching the penis. And that part of the urethra is called the prostatic urethra. The prostate is covered by capsules of tough connective tissues and smooth muscles. Beneath these layers of the prostate can be divided into a few zones. The peri peripheral zone, which is the outermost posterior sections, is the largest of the zones. It contains about 70% of the prostate glandular tissue. Moving inward, the next section is the central zone, which contains about 25% of glandular tissues as well as the ejaculatory ducts that join with the prostatic urethra. Last is the transitional zone, which contains around 5% of the glandular tissues as well as the portion of the prostatic urethra. The transitional zone gets this name because it contains transitional cells, which are also found in the bladder. The transitional zone undergoes hyperplasia or an increase in the number of cells in the large percentage of older men that often leads to compressions of the urethra. This is called benign prostatic hyperplasia and is often considered a normal part of aging. At the microscopic level, each of these tiny glands that make up the prostate is surrounded by a basement membrane made largely of the collagen. Sitting within the basement membrane is a ring of cube-shaped basal cells as well as a few neuroendocrine cells interspersed throughout. Finally, there's an inner ring of the luminal columnar cells which are within the lumen or center of the gland. Luminal cells secrete substances into the prostatic fluid that makes it slightly alkaline that give it nutrients which nourish the sperm and help survive in the acidic environment of the vagina. During an ejaculation, sperm leaves the testes, travel through the vas deferens into the ejaculatory ducts, and travel to the prostatic urethra. Smooth muscles in the prostate contracts and push the prostatic fluid into the urethra, where it joins the sperms as well as the semen, which is the fluid that comes from the seminal vesicles. The luminous cells also produce the prostate-specific antigen, or the PSA which helps to, uh, to liquefy the gel like semen after ejaculation, thereby freeing the sperm to swim. The basal cells in the luminal cells of the prostate rely on the stimulations from androgens or the male sex hormones for survival. The androgens include testosterones, which is produced by the testicles, androsterone, dehydropyandosterone, which are produced by the adrenal glands and the dihydrotestosterone, which is made from the testosterone by the prostate itself. With these androgens, the normal prostate cells, particularly the luminal cells, cannot survive and undergo apoptosis or programmed cell death. For example, if the testicles are castrated or removed for some reason, the prostate significantly shrinks in size largely due to the death of the luminal cells. Prostate adenocarcinoma most often results from the genetic mutations in the luminal cell, but can also be a basal cell and results in the cell dividing uncontrollably. Some risk factors for genetic mutations include old age, obesity, and high or low fiber diet. Mutations in two genes that have been linked specifically to prostate cancer or breast cancer gene, one breast cancer gene 2 also known as the BRCA1 and BRCA2, both of which also cause the breast, breast cancer. Once a cancer-causing mutation happens within the cell, the affected cell starts to grow and replicate out of control, forming a tumor, 
Early on the prostate, cancer cells depend on heavily on androgens for survival. But eventually, the cancer cells mutate and find a way to keep multiplying without relying on androgens. Overall, prostate cancer cells have relatively slow rate growth compared to other types of cancers. Finally, even though the prostate dental carcinoma is the most common type of prostate cancer, other rare types have exist as well. These typically arise from the other cell types in the prostate. For example, transitional cell carcinoma arises from the cells in the transitional zone. And small cell prostate cancer arises from the neuroendocrine cells. Early on, prostate cancers typically causes no symptoms. And that's because the majority of prostate cancers arise in the posterior peripheral zone, which is far away from the urethra. As a result, these tumors can grow quite large before they can cause problem with urinations. Over time, if the cancer dust compresses or invade the urethra or bladder, it can cause difficulty urinating, bleeding, and pain with urinations and ejaculations. If the cancer becomes metastatic and most commonly spreads to the bones, like the vertebrae or pelvis, resulting in a hip or a lower back pain. Prostate cancers can be detected by digital rectal examination, which is where a finger is inserted into the rectum to free against the anterior wall of the rectum, which lies along the posterior part of the prostate. A tumor located here would feel like an irregularly hard lump, but if the tumor arises elsewhere, like in the anterior per peripheral zone, the tumor would be out of reach during the digital rectal exam. Another approach is to use a transrectal ultrasound or MRI image to the prostate. Prostate cancers can also cause an elevation in the prostate-specific antigen. But ultimately, the diagnosis of prostate cancer requires biopsy so that the cells can be scored using the Gleason grading system. The Gleason scale identifies the two most common cells patterns which the prostate tissues assign a score between 1 or 5 to both of them. A score of 1 represents a normal, well-differentiated cells, and a score of 5 represents a highly abnormal cells that barely resembles the normal prostate tissues. Once the primary and secondary patterns have each received a score from 1 of 5, these two numbers are added together, resulting in the Gleason score between 2 and 10, with 2 representing low-grade tumors and 10 representing high-grade dangerous tumors. In terms of treating when the tumor is confined to the prostate and hasn't metastasized, active surveillance is usually done. This includes routine tumor marker measurement as well as the imaging to ensure that the prostate cancer remains confined to the prostate. If the tumor spreads beyond the point, treatment options include surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy, and hormonal therapy. All right, as a quick recap. Prostate cancer usually refers to a prostate adenocarcinoma, but can also include more or of a typical tumor as well. It typically starts in the posterior peripheral zone of the prostate and can detect using a digital rectal examination. Typically, a serum prostate-specific antigen is also elevated in a prostate cancer. Treatment might include chemotherapy, radiation therapy, surgery, and hormonal therapy. But active surveillance is also an option in many cases of where the rock lies to the prostate.